Hey everyone, a couple people have asked for a, a video describing how I do the protein concentration data. I think this is kind of a nice little video to put in to prepare you for the last experiments that we'll be doing where we'll be actually doing several standard curves every experiment and uh, this will get you going and remember calculated we had we basically determined protein concentration using BCA and we did the same thing the same standard and the same unknowns with Bradford which we show here at the bottom so what I'll do here is I'll go through the BCA data first which are rows A and B. And remember, the orientation, the plate reader kind of twists all the data around where if you remember A, B, C through H are down along the side of the plate, which is along the left-hand side of the plate, while all the numbers are the numbers across the plate. So the plate's kind of like inverted. And hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. We've done that a couple of times this semester so far. So I think everything's okay. Now let's go ahead and start off. We, we started off where our protein concentration is 2 milligrams per mil. So I'm just going to type a 2 here. And the next cell below, I'll do, take that, divide it by 2, and hit enter. I mean, it's easy, to, it's easy math to do, but it gets a little bit more challenging as we go down. And we want to go down about this far. So here's the protein concentrations. And the next thing we need to do is the averages of the absorbances. What I've also done prior to this is I've looked at all this data. All of them are all really close. All, the, all my duplicates look good for both the Bradford and for the BCA. And I want you to go ahead and inspect that data. I think within the protocol, there's some statements. I think uh, they need to be within a certain absorbance of each other. I think that absorbance is a pretty small number considering the absorbances we see at the top end of the curve. So if they're at the top end of the curve, they can actually be a little bit bigger than that. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But, you know, some of these other values, make sure they're relatively close to each other. So we'll go ahead and do it here and hit equals and then average. Click on average. And then we'll highlight these two values and hit enter. So we know the average of those two values is 0.253. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy those down. What I'm also going to be doing in the future and just preparing ahead of time is we have unknown A and B here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight those numbers as well. There's unknown A is here and unknown B is here. But we're, for the initial set of calculations, we're going to ignore these values. First thing I need to do is I want to look to see what does the data look like. So I'm going to highlight this area here. This is my standard curve. I'm going to go to insert and pick x-ray scatter. I, if you'll, you'll see there's a theme here. I always pick x-ray scatter and I'll move this up here like this. And I look at the data and it actually looks pretty good. It looks nice and linear and I think that looks good but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on there and, and click add in trend line and I'm going to click display equation on chart and display R squared on chart. I always do that because I want to have a record of what that data look like. And that data actually looks really good. You know, it's over 0.99 which is excellent and then have the, the curve and all that. And so right now it, upon inspection I expect you for, oh, in your report, I'm not going to do it on the screen. I want you to go ahead and, you know, double click here and I want you to add legend, you know, that's milligrams per mil and this is absorbance at 562 nanometers. I want you to add that information in. I'm not going to do that. And I would say the chart title you can say is, uh, go ahead and put that is, you know, BCA SA standard curve. Okay, I want you to go ahead and do a little bit of, fill that stuff in. I'm not going to do that. I think all of you know how to do that sort of thing. So we have this curve. It looks really good. The, the R squared is 0.9968. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and do slope. Type the word slope and I'm going to type Y intercept. 
Excel will calculate these values. I mean, we know we have the, the slope here and the y-intercept here, but I'm a, you can manipulate the system and change things, and I want you to be able to know how you can do things more dynamically. And so I'm gonna do slope is, e is equal to slope. Click on slope. And the function about slope is interesting. Look here, it goes known y's and known x's. So you have to highlight the y's first and then the x's. And we do the same thing for intercept and it's equals, it's intercept. And you do the y's first and then the x's. And we have these two values in place here. And if you notice, they look just like the equation you have here. So they're the same values here. So we're going to basically do our quantitation refer to these values. Because if you remember, the line is fitted to y is equal to mx plus b. And if you rearrange the equation trying to solve for x, so we have x is equal to, it's the quantity of y minus b divided by m. So what we're going to do here is calculate the concentration of the unknowns using this form of the equation. So we'll, we'll go here and put equals, and the y value is here minus the y-intercept, close that off, and then divide that by the slope. And we have that value. Now, even though it's not difficult to do that, I want to be able to just copy down, because later in, this, later in this semester, you're going to calculate a larger number of, cal number of things, so I want you to know how to be able just to be able to copy down, because and so what we do here is we click here, and what I want you to do is just put dollar signs in front of all these values. And that fixes that data point is constant. So that's like referring to a constant. And that way we can just click that down and we have the concentration of unknown B. And what you have to do for your report, I want you to have a standard curve with milligrams per mil and absorbance 562. And I want you to do that for Bradford, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But I also want you to generate a table. And this table has the assay, unknown A, unknown B. You might want to type them out. I'm kind of taking a shortcut. BCA is the assay here. Unknown A is equal to this value. So we'll type equals this value, hit enter. And unknown B is equal to that value, so we hit equal and then that value, hit return. And then we're gonna do Bradford in a, in a momentarily, but I'll go ahead and type it in the table, and we'll have those two values here. This will be comprised of the table that'll be in your results section. So now we've done all the BCA assay. It's a, it's a relatively straightforward. This is something, once you do it a few times, it'll become natural. It'll be really a pretty easy thing to do. And we're gonna do this, you know, almost every single experiment for the rest of the semester. We'll be determining a standard curve. So let's go ahead and go down here and let's go ahead and repeat this stuff again. And I will go ahead and tie it here, make it closer here. I will go ahead and put two here and then do the same thing as equal to this value divided by two, hit there. And we'll drag this down two through nine. And go ahead and make that number so you can see those values a little bit better. And then we'll do equal to, we'll be averaging the results. So we have there. Hit enter. And we'll, we'll just copy that down, oops. And we see we have unknown A and B, so it's going to do unknown A and B. And there was a relatively, those relative absorbances, uh, 
uh, yeah, no, just a minute. I, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. I'll just go ahead and hit delete. Is equal to average, click that, hit highlight those two values, hit enter. So we know the average of those two values is here. Now we go ahead and drag that down to here and go two more to include unknown A and B. So we have unknown A here and unknown B here. Oops. Let's go ahead and count. Let's go ahead and do the same thing we did over here during a standard curve. Insert. XY scatter plot without the points. We'll go ahead and put that right, that this little graph right here. And I want you to look at this graph. Let's go ahead and we'll put so here's the standard curve with all data points. And if you remember from my pre-lab lecture, I told you you need to look at the Beer's Law that we're taking advantage of, it, you have to verify that the standard curve is linear. And in this case, it's very obviously not linear. So we see that these points through here are probably pretty linear, and these two points are not. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and put this over here a little bit like that. And I'm, I'm thinking that delete the two points there. So I'm going to just click off here somewhere, and I'm going to just highlight. 0.078 data to the 0.5 mg per mil data and do the same thing. Insert XY scatter and click that here and put that right here. So we have these values here. And we'll go ahead and right click on there and add trend line and we'll put the equation in the R square. And we see that the R square is 0.9981, that's good. So this data point, we basically are now eliminating the top two data points because they were no longer linear. I want you to, on the graph here, label these things here. Bradford, and I just, just type something in to differentiate it. I, do, I write little notes to myself when I'm doing these calculations, and I will probably generate figures that look a little prettier to put in the report. We have this data, this data that's nice and linear. So here, with this smaller subset of data, I want to go ahead and determine the calculation of how much material is present. And so we'll do the same thing again. Remember this equation, x is equal to y minus b divided by m. But let's go ahead and determine the slope get that value, and we'll do the y-intercept. So here is equal to slope, click there, and it's, remember it's unknown y's, which is these values right here, comma, unknown x's, which are here, and then we'll do the same thing here, is equal to intercept, and highlight this area here, comma, highlight that area, hit enter. So you notice that these, this number is the same as that number, this number is the same as the slope. So we have that calculated. Now, let's go ahead and calculate the concentration of unknown A and B. So we go to this box here, is equal to the quantity, this value, minus the intercept, Close it off, now divide it by the slope, hit enter. And if you remember right, so we can copy down, we have to go ahead and fix things in place, put the dollar signs in in front of the appropriate spots. Hit enter, so again, the number stays the same, we can copy it down. And now we've calculated the concentration of unknown A and unknown B. So the Bradford here, we go ahead, is equal to this value. Hit enter. 
and it's equal to this value, enter. So what I expect to see in your results section that you need to turn in is I want to see a table comparing unknown A and B's concentration and maybe try to explain why the numbers are different because the samples were exactly the same. Explain that difference. I want you to go ahead and present all the graphs you need to demonstrate if there's an area that's not linear. I want you to re-graph it and present that graph. And be sure to label constant and put mix per mil down on this axis and absorbance at 595 here, absorbance at 562 here, and mix per mil here. And kind of write up what you did and why the differences are, why you did what you did, why you might have eliminated points, why you might not have eliminated points. And kind of look at the center curve and explain why and how you analyze that, that curve. And that's all you need to put in your little section you need to turn in. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me during lab class or send me an email. If it's complicated, I may set up an appointment where you come into the office or a, a Zoom meeting. We'll see you later. Thank you. Bye.